Okay, I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. I don't really know if this is something that you want to see, but I've had a lot of requests for longer videos, so I'm just going to go with it. So this is demo day one of this camper. Um, I bought this as a flip a couple weeks ago and kind of just had it in my yard until I had some time to get to it. So now I finally have some time. So when I get a camper and I am doing a flip like this, I pretty much gut the entire thing. There's usually a lot of water damage into it. So that is my reason for gutting the entire thing is because I need to get it down to the walls and the floor so I can repair the water damage first. So as you can see, I removed the couch cushions. I removed all of the mattresses and the bedding and all that stuff. I have this weird rule about reusing mattresses. I just can't do it. And so I throw them away along with pretty much everything else in campers. Now, obviously, there's some things I can save and reuse, but for the most part, I don't reuse anything that has cushions or anything that has curtains. This camper has some pretty significant water damage to the front cap, and so basically everything that you see there is going to come out. Also included in Demo Day is taking out any of the curtains and any of the window treatments, basically all of that stuff. Take everything off the wall that you can. Um, that's pretty much what I do, just get to a blank slate. As you can see, I was kind of careful taking that off. I think I might reuse that track that that um, curtain rod was on. And so I'll reuse that. But pretty much any of these window valences, any of the shades, that is all going to go to the dump. Because they're nasty. They smell like mold and rotten camper just because of the water damage. So it's not even worth my time to try to reuse any of that stuff. So once the window treatments are off, next I'm going to go over to the dinette. Um, if you see, there's a huge pot of water damage right there on the side. So I'm not even going to bother reusing this dinette. So I'm going to take the whole thing out and throw it in the trash. Now this dinette had a ridiculous amount of screws in it. And so it's going to be a minute. You're just going to see me taking off screws. I mean, it, it probably took me 10 minutes of finding all of the screws hidden everywhere in this dinette to take it out. I mean, it was ridiculous. I'm honestly not really too sure how it got such significant water damage on the side of the dinette right there. Um, I know it's got some water damage on the floor. And so I'm guessing when the slide was in, it just kind of soaked up some of that water that was on the floor. Um, so I'm going to have a fun time repairing that for sure. Now, I knew this camper had a lot of water damage. Y'all are going to be like really shocked when you see the bathroom. Because that is the worst part to me. Um... The front was definitely a lot worse, a lot more, worser, worse, more worse. It was worse than I expected. Let's just say that. But it's okay. It's nothing I haven't dealt with before. It's just going to take a little bit more time. So now that we have 12,000 million screws, hopefully this thing will come right out. Um, I do think I did end up taking a hammer to this thing because it just did not want to come out. Oh, there it is. All right. So that's my lesson for you. At first, it doesn't come out. Bang it with a hammer. And then if it still doesn't come out, bang it harder with a hammer. Now, these dinettes actually have what I call kind of like a false panel. You'll see me open it there with the hammer. And basically, you take that quarter inch paneling off and there's going to be screws underneath. Um, you have to take those screws out in order for the dinette to come apart from the wall. So, I mean, you could probably bang it off the wall, but, you know, it seems a lot easier to just take the screws out and go that way. Now, I'm basically just taking all of the other trim pieces off. Like I said, this dinette had so many screwed-in trim pieces. It was absolutely ridiculous. Um, and the way this slide works, it's actually raised from the floor. And so, it's built differently than most dinettes are because it, it's basically the entire slide is what this is made out of. Um, so, you can see I took the middle part off there pretty easily. And then I forgot one screw underneath. Um, but I can still kind of pick it up and rip it anyway. So that piece, there's one more screw underneath that I forgot. And once I get that screw off, it pretty much comes out. Now the other side gave me a little bit more difficulty. And so I pretty much just ended up banging it off. And then there's actually a wire um, coming into the dinette right there that I ended up um, cutting. And I'll solder that back later. All right, I'm almost there. So this is really the last piece of the dinette. Um, I just kind of banged on it and separated it. Um, you should see my trash pile outside. I actually probably should have took a video of that because it's a pretty big trash pile for such a small camper. I was surprised. It's just going to get worse from here though. So anyway, almost there. Almost there. Last piece. There it is. 
And unfortunately, when I took all of this out, uh, there was some pretty yucky water damage under there. So I'll have to add that to my list. All right, so now that that's done, I'm going to start on the front. So all of these cabinets and this entire base of the bed is going to come out. Um, I need to do that in order to repair the water damage. Um, I'm actually going to make a separate video on how to specifically take these cabinets out. Because uh, I feel like people have a lot of damage to the front cap and this has got to come out. So these are just some shots of the water damage. You can see the rippling on the front. That's pretty much how you know that it's toast and it all needs to come out. All right, so diving right in, you pretty much take the bottom panel up and then there's gonna be screws all on the inside. You just take all those screws out. Um, usually this, this is actually three separate pieces. Um, so as long as you take all of the screws out that you can find, um, especially, like I said before, popping up that bottom panel and taking that out and getting the screws that are underneath there, these front cabinets should actually come out fairly easily. Now there's usually some type of lights or electrical wires up here and what I do is I uh, snip the wires from the actual light itself. That way I don't have any connections that might wiggle loose uh, that are going to be basically inside this cabinet. So that's what you don't want is any connections you're not going to be able to get to later on. But if I snip it right there where the light actually is, I can pull that entire wire basically through the framing and then when I take the cabinet out I can just pull it out from okay so now it's time for the fun part taking the middle section of the cabinets out so after you've had your checklist cut the electrical take all the screws out maybe double check to make sure all your screws out because I still had one in then you just give it a little tug and the whole thing will slide down now I actually didn't notice that the wires were like twisted and tied in a knot so I had to untie the wires inside before it would slide through the framing. In retrospect, I see why RV manufacturers do that, but in my brain, I wasn't thinking that I would have to slide it through another hole, and anyway, it's fine. I ended up untangling it, and then it just slid right through, and then the whole thing can come off. Um, I will reuse this, not that piece right there, because that's toast, but I will reuse the basically the front part, that whole section I have, um, so I'll save that for later. Now, same thing for these two sides. Just make sure all the screws are out and, uh, just give it a good tug. So this one didn't want to come out. I thought I had missed a screw, but then I ended up just getting up, getting some leverage, boop, and it came right off. So I'll put that away and save that for later. And then I'll pretty much do the same thing for the other side. Just make sure your screws are out, give it a tug, and then it comes right off the wall. All right, now that that's down, I'm gonna start on the bed. And this gave me a little bit of a run for my money because I have never taken one apart that was like this before. So I started with the easy section, obviously, up top. Um, and then this one had drawers, which is fine. That's not really the complicated part. Um, the complicated part was how they framed it out and how they built it. Um, so I basically had to take all of the side panels off of this front piece. So these are two separate pieces. The front part, which is the big part, and the middle part, which I'm working on right now. So I took apart all the screws there. I ended up having to take apart both panels. The front panel came off. And even then, the way they framed it, um, they put in the drawers, but they put them in after they screwed it to the ground, which made no sense. So there were screws coming in from the other, from down below, um, and I just couldn't get to them. So I just ended up tearing it off the floor and... I feel like I've demoed so many trailers over the years that it's almost like a catch-22 when I come across something that I haven't done before or haven't seen before. Because it's like, oh yeah, I get to learn something new. But at the same time, it's like, ugh, I gotta learn something new. So I did pretty much have to take this entire thing apart. I did uh, take these off gently so I'll be able to save the side and the front panel. Um, so that's going to be nice. But I still felt like it was 12,000 million screws and it was totally unnecessary to have that many screws in one place. And then I was like, why is it not coming up still? There was a screw uh, underneath. So after I got that one screw, I kind of tipped it forward and this is where it was actually screwed to the ground. But I couldn't get to that screw because of the way they framed it out. So I just kind of tipped it, bent the screw, and then it come right out. Then you can see the sliders right there. I went ahead and took those off and I'll reuse those. Um, and then I can put those out of the way and start on the front part. 
Now these are the easiest little side shelves that I've had to take off. Usually I have to like stick my whole hand in my head in tiny little spaces, but this one was not that way, which was really nice. Um, so it was pretty much just a couple screws and it came right off. Um, and you see, I, I didn't want to stick my hand in there. So I just figured I'd put that part back on later. Um, and then take the outlet out. Uh, super easy to take these out. It's pretty much just two screws and there's little tabs on the back and you push it through and that's pretty much all there is to that. Um, same thing for that side, but I ended up taking the screw out underneath because I didn't actually have to stick my hand under there. I don't usually mind sticking my hand in like small places, but this caper was like exceptionally gross. So I was like, eh, a hard pass for me. Okay, now 99% of the time, this platform is going to be made of like one, one and a half inch framing and then basically plywood that is nailed to the top of it. That was not the case in here. So I had to do um, some little specialty way to get this off, which was really ridiculous. So this entire piece right here is two separate pieces was quarter inch paneling and foam with some framing glued in it. So I took this panel off and I was like, what? Why is there another panel under this? This makes absolutely no sense to me. Because usually there is not two panels stuck on one another. I don't know why there was two panels there. Super weird. And then they must have put this in and then put the sides on because they screwed this in from the outside walls in. And so there was really not a good way to take it off. This is me like trying to get this off before I realized it was actually like foam and there's no way it was coming apart because it was all glued together. So I ended up getting a jack and a block of wood <laughs> and putting it underneath and basically jacking the whole thing up. Enough to where I could get my hands underneath and like pry it open. So sometimes you got to have a little bit of critical thinking skills and demo day to get it apart. Oh, you see right there. You see that big old gap right there. Yep, that's exactly what I did. And then pried it up. I'm not going to reuse that. I'm just going to build a new one because it's got water damage anyway. Pulled this part up and <laughs> it's pretty funny to see the... The whole bottom part will like come apart with the wall because there's so much water damage in there. Anyway, that was demo day number one. Subscribe if you want to see any more of my demo days because it's going to be interesting.